do you want to know the one major thing that made a huge impact when caring for a collection of house plants as big as mine? Stick around and let's dive into it. Hi, my name is Memo. This is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me. It's tropical houseplants. So you might be asking yourself, what is this one thing that was this major for me? And it might surprise some of you because, and it's not the obvious thing that you might be thinking of, plant care calendar. And I've probably lost quite a few viewers already on this video because they're not going to sit here and watch me talk about organizing your collection and making sure that everything is kind of scheduled. That's fine. For the people that have stayed, shall we look into how I do it within my collection? And maybe give you a few tips of things that I've learned along the way. So some of the benefits of having something like a plant care calendar could be a few things. It could be being able to keep track of how things might be changing in your collection, the season, the seasonal changes in terms of the care that you might need to do, pest management, getting ahead of pest management so it doesn't overwhelm you when that pest season starts, although in all fairness in my collection it's all year round. <laughs> being able to go on holiday without stressing quite so much, moving properties easier with all of your house plants. These are just a few of the benefits of having something like a plant care calendar and how it could just give you that tiny sense of peace and organization in the chaos a lot of the times that tends to be our collections. It also nicely kind of aligns with what a lot of people have been saying for a long time and I am a very strong proponent of this of being aware of your specific plant and their needs basically. So this ties in quite nicely if you are the type of individual that really likes to do some research into a plant that you're gonna get or you've just gotten and look at their habitat and look at what they're used to and see if you can replicate it, obviously with a pinch of salt as well because some of these plants have also been accustomed to household conditions due to the way that the nurseries might be growing them. And a really good way of kind of seeing that is I did the video on the Gebbin Green nursery here in the UK. And one of the things that we were discussing, I think we discussed that on camera as well, because we had a good chat off camera as well, was the fact that a lot of the things that they do within that nursery to the house plants before they've even hit the market is to get them accustomed to lower light levels that people might have in their house, possibly some slightly lower humidity levels that some people might have in their houses. So it is one of those things that it will help. So the plant care calendar basically will really help with when you're finding what your plant needs of being able to put it down and it reminds you, especially when you've got a large collection as well. There will be a point where you become a bit more shall we say native and a bit more kind of going, oh, the plant is like this and I've had these types of plants before, so it's likely to be like this. But again, it's good to kind of have that there. So let me give you a couple of examples of this, for instance, and I'll, I'll use an extreme examples. So think about something like a codiciform plant or even something like an alocasia or a colocasia or a caladium. So the care for those plants changes possibly quite drastically throughout the year because those plants might go down dormant into a tuber or a cordex for the winter and have no foliage. And usually by the time that spring comes around, you need to start thinking about changing your routine. Having something like a plant care calendar will really help you plan ahead for that. Because I can't tell you the amount of times that I'm just like, ah, oh, I've missed the window to start like watering the caladium again in order to get it growing for this season. Usually you can still force it through if you've kind of left it a bit too late. But things like a calendar can really help you get ahead of this. So, I, again, I've spoken to, about this 
previously on another video, and again, I will link it at the top there, where I talk about the tool that I use for this. And this isn't sponsored, by the way, but it is something that I've been using for years. And I know some people ask me on certain videos as well. So the, the I use an app called Plant Care Reminder app, and I will link it down below as well. I think it's now available on iPhones as well. Previously, it was just on Android. So I won't bore you too much about going into an extensive summary of that because there is that other video that I'm linking. But the good thing that you can do on something like that, you can do the same thing on a spreadsheet if you want to do it. You can do it, you can kind of have like a journal that you write these things down in. Do whatever works for you. An app works for me because I just bring my phone and I've got my phone open and I tick things off as I've watered them essentially. But for that, for instance, and this is something that I would encourage you to do whatever method you use, there is things like the name of the plant, potentially the common name and the botanical name. I've got both of them on there. You don't have to. I put an image on there and people that have seen my plant review series will be quite accustomed to those images. I've started doing more with those images now. And again, and this is why I like using the app because I can do all these things because I have one image of the plant and it might be when I first got the plant. And dependingly, I might want to track the progress of the plant over the months or over the years. I can put more images on the same plants kind of section on the app. And same thing goes, and I've done this quite recently and I'm kind of finding it quite interesting. If I'm repotting, I'll take a picture of the roots and the soil or the growing media just because it's one of those things I'm just like, you only get that one opportunity to see the roots, especially if they're in an opaque pot. So it's good to be able to, because you're sitting there going, six months later going, what kind of roots did that plant have? I repotted it. Did it have fine roots? Did it have chunky roots? I don't remember, but having an image on something like that really does help. So your future help, your future self will thank you. Words, again, being very difficult this time of the morning, but doing something like that would really help. Then you've got how often you are watering. And again, as I said previously, use any method that works for you. I'm not going to just say about the moisture meter because I know that that offends quite a few people out there. But yeah, moisture meters, your finger, like a chopstick, whatever it is, or being able to fill the pot after a while to just kind of be able to gauge it essentially and see that's the point where you check if your plant needs watering, not definitely watering every time. Um, and then you can put things like, do you spray for bugs? Um, how often do you do that? Also, um, do you need to do a flush? How often do you need to do that? All of these things are on there as well. On the app as well, I can put individual things. So if I know that, you know what, I'm looking at this plant and I need to remember at the end of this week, I need to do a repot. You can put one-off events on that one plant's thing to remind you in a week's time that, you know what, whilst you're not watering this plant today, you are meant to be repotting it. So please do that basically. So it's quite useful, especially with big collections, but same as those sometimes with the smaller collections as well. So things like that can be quite useful. There's also a little note section at the bottom. So I'm now getting better, especially for the plant review series of kind of putting things like, I purchased it on this date. I purchased it from here. I purchased it for this amount of money, any other kind of bits of information. Or for instance, um, because again, months and years go by and you might forget things. If say, for instance, I pick up a plant and it's got root rot and I'm dealing with the root rot, I make a little note and said, look, on this date, I dealt with root rot and got it repotted. Even if it didn't have root rot and I just repotted, I still jot it down. And then you're not questioning yourself three months later going, does that plant need a repot? Or why is it struggling? Because I've already forgotten that I repotted it two or three months ago. Could it be that? And if you've got that on the notes, it does really help. So it helps you to organize yourself. The, and again, as I said, these are things that you could put in spreadsheets, you can put in journals and all these things, arguably it'd be a bit more intense basically. But the thing with this, and I mentioned it earlier on, is you can flip it at different times of the year. I can do it on my app, you can do it on a journal, you can do it on a spreadsheet where you've got 
one set of information. This is how often it needs to be sprayed down for pests, or this is how often you need to be checking for pests, not necessarily spraying down for pests. How often you should be checking if it needs water, when should you be fertilizing, when you shouldn't, all of these things. And you could have exactly the same thing for winter. My app does both, basically. So I've got all of these different settings that I was talking about, there's a summer option, there's a winter option, there's a simple toggle that I can go to when the when the season changes and toggle it from summer to winter and it, it updates everything. Because I know from last winter roughly how often or less often I need to be doing things then in relation to the summer and the growing period. But you could do the same thing with a spreadsheet, you can do the same thing with a journal. The other thing, as I mentioned, was things like moving house. Essentially, if you've got something like this, by default, especially if you've got all of your plants on it, guess what you've got? You've got an inventory of all of your plants listed. So it's easy for you if you're moving and if you're moving something like a large collection and do not get me wrong, I know how stressful it is. And there's a very near and dear fellow that we speak to on a, that I speak to on a regular basis and they just went through a move, and I'm quite glad to say that it went well, and congratulations, you know who you are. Uh, but I also know that it was stressful. It is, it is what it is. But something like an inventory can help you kind of deal with, have I moved everything? Has everything arrived okay? Or kind of pre-planning on kind of going, so these are all my plants. Where does this one need to go? I can You can plan ahead. So something like that is really good to have essentially and something like the plant care calendar will do that for you and another biggie arguably you'll probably use it more frequently than moving house because you won't be moving house every year hopefully um, but it could be something like holiday care for your plants because a lot of us when we go away especially if we're going away for a long period of time we will get other people to take care of our plants. If you've got something as organized as that, you don't have to worry about creating a care sheet for your entire plant collection when you go, because I know a lot of people do that. The same thing goes with my app. I could just give somebody access to my app. They'll log in, everything is synced. I can back things up as well on the cloud, which is great. And just give them access and just go, I might need to talk them through a few things, but everything is there and it will remind them on their phone. Same thing goes if you've got something like a spreadsheet or a journal, you can just talk them through that and it's already all there for them. It's one less thing to do before going on holiday and one less thing to stress and worry about before going on holiday. So there is good value in it. So how would you, how would you start off? I gave you a lot of examples here and it might seem a bit overwhelming. Start off small. I didn't get my plant calendar to where it is now overnight, basically. It took time. And I'm not going to lie, if you've got an awful lot of plants, that first initial input of information is going to take you a hot minute. But if you then stay on top of it, then it's fine. Because now every time I know that a plant comes into my collection, it instantly goes onto the plant calendar. So then I know. And that's the good thing about something like this. So when you're starting, start off small. If you're using the app, maybe don't do everything. Maybe just add an image, add a simple name, add how often you think you're going to be watering it and how often you think you're going to be fertilizing it and change it accordingly. And over time, you might then get more comfortable in using it quite frequently and start using all of the other features as well. The other thing as well, so if you're doing something like a spreadsheet, again, same applies. You don't have to have all these different parameters. You don't even need to worry about necessarily starting like a seasonal calendar just yet. Just get the information down, get it organized, and it will build over time. Same thing goes, you might not need to do all of this in the same day. Just build it slowly, and at least then when it's there, it should help moving forward as well. The whole process also gives you some flex as well because, and I mentioned getting a plant into my collection and adding it straight onto the calendar, you might be questioning and kind of saying, well, you don't know yet what care that specific plant, yes, you can research it, but you don't know what it's going to need specifically in your kind of conditions. Yes, but we all have the same challenges when we get a plant to begin with, and we all default to our comfort zone. So for me, depending on the plant, it might be that, you know what, 
It's the first week that it's in here. It's going to go in a relatively safe location where I know that it will get bright and direct light if that's what it needs. And it will get checked for water for the first few weeks every seven days. And I will adjust accordingly. Does it need to be less frequent than that? Then I'll move it. Does it need to be more frequent than that? I'll move it. But it can start there and it can kind of evolve over time as you learn what it needs in your space. The other thing that can help as well is looking sometimes at the variation within your collection. And that might be the moment where you kind of realize this kind of like standardized every seven days watering or every 14 days watering doesn't work. Because if you're using, arguably it'll be easier on a spreadsheet or on the app, you can just search or filter it out and just say, show me all my philodendrons. And you can see all of your philodendrons that you'd be surprised to see the spectrum of how frequently things are watered, all of these things. And you might then go, ah, you know what? I'm learning things from my own collection because these two philodendrons, for instance, might be very similar. So why is one getting watered less and one is getting watered more? Then you can kind of, because it, it sounds obvious, but in that moment, it might not be. You might be like, oh, it's in a different location. So that's getting less light or that's getting more light. So if I want to water it less, do I give it a bit less light and will it be okay, basically? So things like that could really be quite beneficial when you've got something like a calendar. But the one thing that I will say overarching for all of this, regardless of the method that you use, if you're gonna start using it, be consistent. Because if you're not consistent, then essentially you're gonna waste a bit of time and you'll go back to what you were doing originally. Try to be consistent. The, the sooner you get into that routine, the sooner you can start reaping some of the benefits that we were talking about. So for instance, you won't have to worry about moving. You won't have to worry about the holidays as much. You, you can kind of flip things over quite simply between the seasons. Yes, and I will say something that I have learned along the way. It's not as simple as me switching my app over for winter watering to summer watering or vice versa, because guess what? There's the in-between seasons like spring and autumn where things start tapering down or start tapering up. So you will kind of see that as you go along the way, basically. Especially like if you were talking about before about the notes, I'll give you a very specific example. Think about a plant that you might have had in your collection for four years. If you were taking notes on it every year and you kind of look at that plant and just kind of go, because you probably forget this, every year around the same time, it struggles in the same way. It loses a whole bunch of leaves and they turn yellow. But if you put that in notes every year, probably after the first or second year, like after you go back and you're just like, oh, my plant, for some reason, is always losing leaves around April and May. Why is that? Because maybe you haven't adjusted the seasonal aspect of things. And it can really help with a lot of things along the way. So another tip that I would have in terms of staying consistent and staying on track with something like this is, if you can, early on, add something that you know is going to give you value. So it could be the fact that you're tracking how often you need to be checking for pests, if that's a big issue for you. Which means that the more, the more you add things that have a huge value to you instantly, the more likely you are to want to use it and update it and keep up with it. Because if you don't, then you won't get the value that you desperately want from it. So make sure that you add something that you really do find the value on. It might be, oh, I always forget to repot and then my plants get really pot bound and then it's a much bigger issue trying to repot it, add that. If it's pest management, add that. Anything like this, fertilizing could be another one that people worry about that they keep forgetting to fertilize. Do that. Or if you're worried that you're over fertilizing, put that on there and it will give you a very quick indication of just like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be fertilizing this every three days. Things like that. And ultimately, just to start wrapping it up, there are a lot of things that something like a calendar could help with. We've talked about them, they're going away, they're having an inventory of your plants, being able to kind of, if you're a person that tends to underwater quite frequently because you forget, that will remind you if you're a person that overwaters again, it will show you that you're overwatering. Things like that can be quite groundbreaking, groundbreaking, but impactful in our lives within our collections just to help make things a bit easier. So even if it's something that you're not 100% convinced 
and the the purpose of the video wasn't for me to convince you it was just to kind of share my experiences with this but even if it's something they're 100 percent convinced if it's not going to take you an awful lot of time and you can do it for a handful of plants give it a try you might surprise yourself you might actually find some value in it and ultimately as i said that was the big thing for me to be able to care for this size of a collection because I don't have to worry so much every single day about individual plant needs and where they are and what I'm doing and have I forgotten to water that plant and ah, oh, because it was right at the back, I didn't know and I missed it and all of these things. Thing of the past, basically. So it could be quite a major thing. And yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say on this video. If you've got your own type of calendar situation that's going on and you want to share what you use please 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 do so down below i would also like to hear it as much as anybody else would and if you haven't done this and you think there might be some benefit let us know down below let us know what your challenges are and all of us that have got the different calendars might be able to chip in and just kind of go oh yeah i had the same thing but because i'm now tracking this or because i'm checking this because of the calendar it's really helped so it might give you some tips on how specifically to set up your calendar based on your specific requirements, especially if one of us has had similar experiences and similar benefits from their kind of calendar. Oh, this is such an admin email. I do like a good spreadsheet. I am very sad. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.